say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, outdoor kitchen. That's right. Hey, I raided the smokehouse. Did you? Guess what for? Why? Hickory. Oh. What do I need hickory for? Oh, where did that come from? That's nice if it dropped from the sky. You know what, tonight we're gonna to talk about beef and we're gonna talk about cowboys, real cowboys. You know, a lot of people don't know that Kentucky is one of the leading beef producing states in the United States. I didn't know that. It is. Now you think about the size of our state compared to some other states, and we're, we're right up there. Let's talk about tonight, the cowboy way. Okay. There's a lot of people who would like to be a cowboy. I'm one of them. I'll you never, are. I'll never be there. I do have a cow. I know. But you know what? I would have loved to have lived back in those times. So I went to Lincoln County and found some folks out there who are doing things the old cowboy way. And in a little while, we're going to show you how to make the absolute best steak you have ever eaten in your life. But first, let's go get real with some cowboys. We're in Lincoln County, not Lincoln, Nebraska. Right. We got a we got a bona fide cowboy standing right here. <laughs> How you doing, Michael? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? You know what? You're standing next to your horse. You dud it up, and uh, according to Cliff, buddy of mine, you have an impressive beard. No, oh, yeah. not well, agree I, with I work on it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a work in progress. Now you are, uh, and a lot of people want to be a cowboy. A lot of people talk about being a cowboy. Yeah. A lot of people aren't cowboys. I'm a cowboy because I have a cow, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I've got yeah. a cow. You got it covered. I've actually got, got two cows. Covered. Oh, then you really got it covered. <laughs> I'm telling yeah. you what. But you know what? In in all reality here, you are a cowboy. That's what you do. You have all the rules. You're following all the rules and regulations of real cowboy dumb. If yeah. there is such a thing. Yeah. Which is impressive. And in, in this day and age, you know, finding people who are going back to the roots of everything is kind of what we do with our television show, the traditional way, the real way. Now, what is it about what you do that is not only traditional but advantageous and maybe up and coming in the way yeah. things are done with the cattle farm? One of the first big operations I worked on was a feedlot, and they did everything with a four-wheeler. And I grew up with horses, and I, you know, I knew that that was kind of the best way to do things, but you, you try a little bit of everything. And it didn't take long to, for me to see that cattle and four-wheelers just don't go together. And as I've went through the last 10 years being in different places and working more with horses and working more with cattle, it's just been, to me, my eyes have been opened that there's just no better way of doing it. There's a reason why all the big ranches out west started things by using horses and to this day still use horses. We're running close to 400 mother cows now and it just makes our lives so much easier when we can use the horses to uh, not only move our cattle around, um, we can tag our calves in the field, we can doctor anything that we've got to doctor in the field and it also lets us create a sort of a relationship with our cows that we can go and ride around our cows. They don't mind us. They're very gentle. They enjoy us being out there, actually. We move our cattle once a day, sometimes twice a day, depending on the time of year. So just by using the horses, it has allowed us to monitor our herds so much better and also allow us to do the work in the field without having to add the stress of bringing them to the barn, keeping them up, putting them through a head shoe, doing all those things. We can do it all right out there. For instance, if we've got a, a calf that's got a bad eye, we can go out there, and because we've worked so hard at getting our, our herd 
used to us being out there horseback, we can get really close to the cattle. We can put a rope on them. We head and heel our cattle. We lay them down, then we put the head rope on the front feet. And then we go about putting the patch, washing the eye out, whatever we gotta do. We let the calf up, it's back with its mother, and we're done, we leave it alone. And all that, you know, if everything works out right, at most 10 minutes, if that. And you don't have the added stress of bringing them to the barn and doing all those things. So every, everybody kind of stays out there in their own world and yeah, it, it just sense. makes the stress level so much lower for our animals. There's some unexpected things that come up when I when I saw you a minute ago. You were you were handling a, a, a rifle with a scope yeah. on it. What's what's some of the things you, you end up looking at out well, here? Well, we have to be very, very careful. You know, our livelihood is our baby calves. Um, and with, with any kind of farming operation, you have predators. Um, we've been fighting a bit of a, a coyote, coyote issue here for the past couple weeks. Um, we for sure lost a calf uh, about a week and a half ago that was eaten solid. Um, and the problem that I'm having with these coyotes is they're really, really brave. Um, they're coming really close to the house. You can see right out the back of the barn, we actually had one come right to those tree lines the other day. Um, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. So wow. they're getting really Brazen. brave, and uh, so we're, we're having to monitor that, that pretty heavily. And then, you know, other things is just, you know, normal, natural weather changes, storms, snow, all those kind of things are all factors that add stress that we can't control. So again, I come back to, because we can do things so well with our horses, we eliminate that stress factor of having to, to stress the animals when we need to move them or work with them or anything, because there's so many stress factors that we cannot control. Now, I know there's not a typical day in this business. I'm sure there's right. you know, no day that's the same as the other. But what is a fairly average day for you? What, what's, how's your day start? This time of the year, the weather's finally starting to cool down, thank the Lord. Um, so we're, we're not having to be out here as early. Um, kind of a typical day is we get here around 7.30, 8 in the morning, get the horses fed up, get everything saddled, and then we head out. Um, when we head out to the pasture, we initially do a, a a ride through the whole pasture. We're in our fall calving season right now, so we've got new babies dropping, hitting the ground. So we want to do a, a complete circle and make sure that we see all the new calves, anything. We get everything tagged that's new. And we're just looking for any kind of problems. Um, like I said earlier, we move once a day at least, if not twice a day. Some Why days. is that? Because So our program here is we're a, a high density uh, grazing, um, rotational grazing operation. So we're rotating through our pastures every day. We're giving almost all of our pastures at least 10 to 15 days rest at a time. They'll be grazed for one, then rest for 10 to 15, if not longer, depending on where the area is. So we're, we want to, we're, we're actually raising pasture with our cattle, if you can think about it that way. Oh, wow. So Different way of thinking about it right yes, there. Yes, it is, yes. So we're, we're moving once a day, and, and, and that it helps the body condition of your cattle and everything if you're doing that, because they're getting the best grasses and it also helps um, grow better grass through doing that. With our operation, we are antibiotic um, and hormone free. So we have to have a very, very strong vaccinating program. And then we also have to have a very, very strong herd monitoring program to monitor things. Because the moment we see something that's bad, we have to do something with that animal. Um, right now, our current protocol is if we have something that's sick, we're giving it vitamin C and some kind of a immune boosting things that aren't antibiotics. And we're having very good um, success with it. You know, we've been inundated over the years mm -hmm. with these products that these pack, you know, they, they feed these animals tons of grain then they're not meant for that. They get sick, then they right. back them with antibiotics, they try to get them better, then we yes. take those antibiotics in. So that's, you know, I'm not 100% of anything. I'm not gonna stand on my soapbox, but if, if I know that I can get something that's at least antibiotic and hormone free, I, I yeah. think we're way ahead of the game. And, and th that's the good thing too about what we're doing is because we're local here, and most of the people know where we are, know what we're doing. They know where it's coming from, and there is that peace of mind that yes, they are doing things doing things right. Who's this looking over your shoulder? This is Chance. <laughs> he's, Let's talk about Chance. He's, he's, he's wanting to be in the, the picture, I think. So Chance is an 11-year-old uh, quarter horse. That's um, your main man? Yes, he is. He's my main man. He's, I've had him since he was a yearling. Um, started him myself. We've been through a lot together, been through several states together. So he's, he's a pretty good guy. We, we get a lot done. Will you mind if we follow you around? Watch what you do today. That'd be perfect. Just a little bit. That'd be morning. perfect. Yeah. Thanks for letting us ride along. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. All right, man. We're gonna watch you now. All right. Because we do move once a day, one of the things that we have to really watch for is that baby calves don't get left. 
So that's John and what he's done is he's tied that calf down and he's putting it on his uh, horse to bring it over here to the side that the mother's on. And we'll try to do this quite often where we just ride through the herd. Even if we're looking for something, we want to we want to ride through several times. That way they get used to us riding through. If we just came in here and roped something every time, they'd get used to that and it would make them a little nervous. So we try to spend a lot of time riding around, even if it's just to ride around and settle them a little bit. We try to spend as much time with them as we can. I've been privileged to work with a lot of, a lot of people and I would say these two were probably ranked on my top list of guys to work with. They're, they're pretty handy guys to work with. You know, it's a team deal, and it really, this really is a team effort out here. We can take down these calves by ourselves and doctor them if we have to, if it, but it just makes it so much easier on the cattle and ourselves and our horses if we have at least one to two other people. Having two more sets of eyes out here to look at the calves and everything, just like that calf there, he wasn't a full-blown pink eye case by whatsoever, but his eye was running a bit. We can take them down that easy. Why well, not just go ahead and wash it out and, and try to prevent it before it gets to be a problem. And that's, that's our big thing is by using the horses and doing this, we can prevent a lot of disasters before they ever happen. God has blessed me with the ability to, to be with horses and cattle and be content with it. Um, I've had an excellent opportunity to work with Marksbury Farm Market, Bluegrass Farms and Woodlands um, and the Corral family. They've given, given myself and these other guys a, a wonderful opportunity to be able to come out here and do this and, and just to live this lifestyle, a lifestyle that I love and, and do th something every day that I wake up happy to do. And just, you know, can't thank God enough for, for where he's put me in, in all this. And, and I know the other guys agree. And, it's just such a blessing to be able to get to come out and, and do what we love every single day, but also make a difference in the world. I think we're with the program that we're doing and the way we're doing things, I think we're going to be making a difference. And, and even if it's just local, I think we can make a difference with the world and what we're doing. So was that not cool, seeing those guys out there riding the range like the old days? I like it. I have a good idea. What? You, why don't you, you need to be a cowboy because I think you would be good. I would like a horse. So I say we buy a horse and then you can ride it around and you can lasso Mabel. No? That way I can have a horse. No? Not a good idea? Right. I think really the whole management thing is, is um, you probably need more than two cows. Really? But it would be fun. It would be fun. Okay. But... Just a thought. Well, let's keep thinking okay. about it. Okay. All right. Yeah, do you remember not too long ago when we smoked our salt, our mm -hmm. bourbon salt? Oh, yeah. Salt. The best that? ever. Yum. Tonight, we're going to use that. And isn't it nice to have stuff that you've, we've made on the show? That you can use. And you can actually use it. So that's some of our bourbon garlic smoked salt. I use it on everything. It is delicious. Now, tell a cherry pepper. Got to have pepper. It's not your average pepper. It is rumored, in fact... It's probably one of the only things that people are really saying is in the Colonel's famous recipe. Really? They say he used that kind of pepper. See if you can find some, grate it up, smell it, and you'll notice that it has this exaggerated, wonderful pepper flavor that's, that's got some subtle tones that aren't there with regular pepper. Smells Let's good. turn these over, do the same thing on the other side. We got quite a bit of smoke coming off that fire, and most people will tell you wait till you get to the coals, the good hot coals, and put it on it. I'm gonna have a little bit of fire going. This is gonna be fire broiled. This yeah. is actually gonna be a flame, and we're gonna actually taste that hickory smoke in there. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pop these on here. I'm gonna check to see if it's hot enough. Three or four minutes per side. Now, we like ours rare. Yeah. Rare. Very rare. So, we're gonna get those, we need to really get it hot and really sock those flavors inside there and seal them in. Then we're gonna do a little concoction in a skillet. We're gonna warm up a little bit of butter. 
We're going to take some fresh garlic. And we're yeah. going to turn that butter and garlic over. Just a little bit of rosemary. You don't need much, and a little bit of thyme. We're going to take our butter and our rosemary and a little bit of thyme and our garlic, and we're going to pour over those steaks once they're done. Sounds good to me. We're losing light. I know. And look what we've got sitting in front of us. Yum. Now we're going to let that rest for a few minutes. While we let that rest, let's go visit Grandma. We call her Grandma. She's not my Grandma, but everybody calls her Grandma. She's going to make a traditional Greek soup. Simple. Oh, it's delish. Chicken, rice, lemon. Oh, watch this. Grandma. Yes. This is one of my favorite soups. You know, when, when you need a little something for the soul, you've had a bad day, yes. chicken soup. Yes. Now this is a Greek recipe. This was your father's recipe. Yes. First of all, we love tradition. We love family. We like to talk about things. I have seen pictures of your dad with fishing poles and fishing lures, and he was a, he was a great outdoorsman. I would have loved to have met him. You think he would like me? Oh, I think he would. You being a hunter, yes. Now let's talk about the fact that he came over here 1912, 1913? 1912, the year the Titanic went down. On the sister ship? He came across on the Carpathia wow. in October. And you somehow have found through today's technology the manifest. Yes, yeah. Where he actually was checked through Ellis Island like yes. so many countless other yes. people who wanted to be Americans at all costs. Yes, he did. He left everything behind. Yes, he did. How much? Do you know how much money he had with him? I, I think they had to have $50. $50? Yes, wow. to get and into the country. it probably took a bunch to get that... And he also had to have someone ready to meet him over here too. And wow. he had a cousin over here. Now, did he have to, did he tell a little story about his age? We think he was only 13 or 14 at the time. There was a cutoff or uh, age Yeah, he, he had to be 18. If we go back to 1899, he'd only been 13 then in 1912. Well, that's how, that's what this country is. People come to this country for opportunity. He recognized that Oh, yes, he did. And you know what? He really did. He worked hard and he made something with himself. What did he do? He had two jobs. Worked in a steel mill. He worked at a restaurant until finally he made enough money to, you know, own his own restaurant. But he worked also at the movie theater. But didn't he own? Didn't he have? Oh, he did in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Owned he the had theater. theater. And that was but, taken out by the flood. By the flood, yeah. In 1936, yeah. Now, he went back to visit and would see his Many times. sisters and mm -hmm. brothers and so on and so forth. Yeah. How many brothers and sisters did he have? You know, I wish we would have asked him when he was around, but we either 11 or 13. Oh, wow. We don't know which. Some of the dishes that he made, some of the traditional stuff, is so easy but so wonderful. So this is so simple, but let's just get started. How, how, how would he do this? How would you do this? Okay. Well, what this is basically what Dad did. He started with cooking a ch boiling a, a chicken. Oh, he saved all the stock. Yes, everything, yeah. yes. And then he poured and he got six cups of, of the stock and then he poured that into a pot. Now something about the bones and cooking the bones down is just all that flavor. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's, it's, it's a fuller, richer flavor. When he you... started from the stock, yeah, bottom. Okay, what do we do now? Okay. Do I start heating this? Yes, we need to get it boiling. And once that boils, we're going to add a cup of rice. Now, what other stories do you have about your dad that you haven't told me yet? Think about it, dig deep. He, well, he used to, to swim with a spear in the Mediterranean Sea because he came from a little island called Kithria, kind of just south of the Peloponnesus Peninsula. Between, it was between that and Creek. And he would get fish, spear fish, bring it home, and uh, they, they made fish soup. They cook fish on the stove. It was fish. You know, they fish. Would, well, most of that time they would do the same thing. They'd boil that stock down yeah. and get that. Yeah. Wow. I wish you could have met him. Well, he was great. All right, Grandma. We got some boiling going on here. It's boiling. So what's the next? Yes. We need to add a cup of rice. Okay. When I when Nikki made me watch the big fat Greek wedding, is that what they call it? Yeah, my big fat Greek wedding. Okay. Yeah. How close to that is your family? To that, I mean, when you think about it. Here's Nikki, and there's Nikki, and then there's Nick, and then this goes on and on and on. Don't and forget on. my uncle Nick, my brother's uncle Nick. Yeah. So, so, I'm telling you what, when Aunt Diane's around and Aunt Katie's around and Tony's around and John's around, it is. And and you know, I watched that movie and I thought, well, it can't be this stereotypical. 
it, but, but it is. But what a fun stereotypical thing it is. While Bill was talking about how he loved your family and how, yeah. how boisterous they were and how fun they were. Yeah. Okay, back to the food. What's next? Okay, that's going to boil. And when that Ellen, boils. You let that go. Yep. Until it starts to Until pump it, up. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Couple then minutes. what? Then we once that's done, then we take it, uh, let it simmer. Okay. 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 Then we take. We're going to take three eggs. I'm going to turn this down. And let it simmer, Grandma. Okay. And we're to sep We're going to separate the uh, whites from the yolks. All right. I'm glad you're doing that. Okay. We are to beat these until they are stiff. Okay, eggs are stiff. That's the lengthiest part of this whole process. Isn't yeah, it? <laughs> yeah, I think it, really it is, is. Yeah. Okay. Now, you need. Will you pour the egg yolks in? I gently pour them in. Just, just work slowly. Them in. Slowly. Yes. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now we need the juice of one lemon. Okay, Tim. You want to add the add the lemon? Okay. Pour it slowly. Slowly. Then we're going to pour all of this into a big bowl because we have to add the six cups of broth with the rice in here. Slowly. Slowly. Little at a time. Now is this something that we, he would have in his restaurant yes. back in the day? Yep. People liked it. Yeah. Okay, everything's mixed. And we could pour it back into the pot and just heat it up. And just and kind of simmer it. Ready to go, yes. All right, I'm going to stand back because okay. I don't want to wear it. And you could taste it later. Maybe you want more lemon. Now, Dad sometimes would put chicken in. So at this point, any salt, any pepper, any we seasonings? We need to put to, to taste. To taste? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. You trust me? Yes. I just might want some more lemon in it, too. It all depends. You like a lot of pepper, Grandma? Yes. needs a little more chicken taste, so can we put in a we bouillon can. cube? Bouillon cube, I can do yes. this. I got it right here. All right, Grandma, let's try this. Okay, let's try this. Yum. That lemon sets it off. Happy Greek eating. That's wonderful. Now, you know what happens when we, when we remember our those who came before us? They live forever. Yes. If we talk about them, we remember them. Yes. And through things like this, you know, and, and right, right over here, you got some fishing lures that he had with a yeah. picture of him. He's actually posing. Yeah. He was so proud of his fishing skills yes. that he posed in like a field and stream picture for that. Mm -hmm. So this is for your papa. What was his name? Emmanuel. This is Emmanuel's lemon chicken soup. Yummy, yummy. Here we go. Wow. Too bad we don't have some of Grandma's soup. Oh, it's delicious. To go soup, with us. But you know what? There are times, and look at that. That's just perfection. Meat. Just meat tonight. That's beautiful. <laughs> so Let's see good. what it tastes like. Now remember, we've got all these flavors going. Oh, wow. Wow. I taste rosemary. I taste it all. It's delicious. You got a fire. You're camping out. This tastes better than anything you can get oh, in any it restaurant. Does. And you know what else is delicious? What hundreds is delicious? and hundreds and hundreds of recipes that we've gathered from family and friends on. TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. Check it out. Look at all of these recipes. Also, if you haven't joined our Facebook page, come be one of our friends. All you have to do is hit like. We'll be talking and chatting. We have so much fun with our friends on there. So we're going to turn the cameras off now, and we're going to dive into this steak. But it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. I'm ready. We'll see you next week on a brand new Tim Farmers Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.
Special thanks to CKY Canoe, Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by Good Foods Co-op, Kentucky Sheep and Wool Producers Association, and the Kentucky Goat Producers Association, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mill, Your Village Shop, Diamond Gusset Jeans, the original gusset jean, careful craftsmanship, continual improvement, Diamond Gusset Jeans, born and worn in the USA since 1987. We know that hardworking Kentuckians can be held down by back and neck problems. The Spine Center of Central Kentucky is a multidisciplinary center to take care of your back, neck, and nerve pain. Our goals are pain control, precise diagnosis, and correction in the least invasive way. From minor aches and pain management to injections or even complex and reconstructive spine surgery, he specializes in minimally invasive spine surgery. The Spine Center of Central Kentucky, we treat all of our patients like family.